welcome back to the second round of our texturing part. The first thing that I want to do is go back here to our rear side and I'm going to show you what I want to achieve here. This element here creates that scratch which is quite characteristic. Almost every rear side has it. So we want to be adding that and for that Substance Painter will live up to its name. We're gonna actually paint that in there. And for that, what I'm gonna do is go into our rear side folder and I'm gonna duplicate that layer. And actually, I want to have it in a separate folder here. So I'm gonna just drag it out here for the moment and I will add a black mask to it. And I'm gonna put it in a folder again and I'm gonna call it Painted Scratches. Now we can go back here to our mask and any brush will do basically with the right size. Now we can just paint these scratches in there. And actually, it's not quite accurate to say that any brush will do. I want to make sure I have the right brush for it. And in that case, the Artistic 2 brush looks quite right to me. I'm going to crank the hardness amount up to 1 and bring the brush size down quite significantly. Size 0 0.14 looks about right to me. And now I will try to make a line here that resembles exactly the one that we have on the reference image. And also I want to be using the lazy mouse for it. Maybe bring the brush size down even more. I'm going to have it here at 12. And that looks pretty all right to me. So now that we did that scratch here, we also affected an area that we actually don't want to have it on, which is that object. So what exactly that means is that we can just use this here as a reference and we will make a copy of that layer here again. And I'm gonna overwrite our black mask on it. And I will jump into our 2D mode by hitting F3. And I'm gonna zoom in here on our rear side where we can already see the scratch from that layer. So back to the layer on top here with our black mask. I'm just gonna replicate what we were just doing here but only on that area where we want it. So one thing to be aware of as well is that within our 2D mode the brush behaves different than in our viewport. So as you can see that radius that stands for our lazy mouse looks way bigger as it did before. So we're gonna bring that down quite significantly. Somewhere around here looks good. And also our brush color changed to black, which actually we wanna have back to white in order to affect our mask. So now we can go ahead here and replicate that scratch. And that looks about right to me. And let me jump back to the viewport. So one thing that I can see here is that our bump looks a little strange. And the reason for that is that here on our actual material, we have these two fill layers affecting it and they come with different height informations. So the first one is the one that we want to disable here and that already puts the height back to a normal amount where it actually looks like this scratch goes in, which is exactly the kind of look that we want on it. So looking at the reference image again, shows that we have quite a little bit of wear here on the top parts where it seems to be fading out more here to that side. So in order to replicate that, I'm going over here to our black mask again and I will add a generator and to be exact, I'm going to add the dirt generator. So right now it's affecting everything, 
gonna put it to multiply and that would also be the right moment to add an actual mask here to our folder. I forgot to do that earlier. So I'm going over here to a geometry decal and as always I will just select our rear side here. And the other thing that I want to do is add a bit more here of these chips on our mask. So back here to the black mask. And now we have a little bit of this extra wear here on top. I feel like the height information could still need a little bit of adjustment. So we'll go back here over to our material and bring the height position down to 4.7. So now we see a little bit more of this chipping going on here. And speaking of chipping, now that I zoomed in here on our rear side, I find that the height is too strong on these chips. So we'll go back into our rear side folder, which we have up here. Make sure we're on the right layer. And what I want to do is switch over here to the height information tab. And I will just globally bring down the height to somewhere around 60 here, looks good. Let's just make sure we switch back to base color. And since I'm still zoomed in here on the rear side, it kind of reveals that this thing here is pure metal and I don't really want it to be that way. So what I'm going to do is go into our screws folder where we added that element to earlier and I will deselect it here from our mask. Gonna put that here to black. And with the mesh selection, I'm gonna just get it out of our mask here. And this piece here could also need some edge wear. So with these two elements here being a little problematic, I'm just gonna make a copy of the screws folder. And I'm gonna call that steel gun painted rear side bits. I'm going to overwrite that mask and add these two elements to it here with white color. And now it's just a matter of going into that folder and I'm going to get rid of these two generators here on top. I just want to be working with the metal edge wear. And I will actually get rid of the curvature map here for a better result. So let's remove it here. And I'm gonna put the individual curvature color here to 0.6. So you can already see how it's not pure metal anymore. And now I will adjust these grunge amounts here somewhere around 2.8. And you can already see how we get some information on here. Let me also bring up the wear level, somewhere around here looks fine. Also gonna increase our contrast. And as for our grunge scale, I'm gonna bring it all the way down. So that it's not so noisy looking. And another thing that we could also do here with the rear side is that these edges here, the edge wear looks a bit too perfect, a little too pristine and accurate and it would be good to add a little bit of randomness in there. So we'll go down here to the rear side folder and I will add a generator on top of everything and I'm gonna pick the selective dirt generator. I'm gonna put it to multiply and that already takes away from it as you can see, especially if we toggle through it here. What I'm gonna do is adjust it a bit more. I'm gonna bring up the contrast to let's say around here. So now it looks like it's almost taking away a bit too much. So what we can do is just to lower the opacity here. Have it somewhere here around 40 or let's put it up to 60. 
and now we have this thing affecting it a bit more randomly here on the edges. I'm actually gonna move it down one so that our sharpen filter still works properly on top of everything. So as the next thing, I'm gonna go over here to our safety switch and I wanna apply the same action that we just did on the rear side just here for this element on the receiver. And we can use the same folder that we already created for this action on the rear side, which was here the painted scratches folder. And we can even use the same layer for it. Or on a second thought, it's actually better to duplicate that layer First of all, let's not forget that one here was our rear side layer. Gonna just duplicate it, overwrite that black mask here. I'm gonna call it the receiver. So back to that artistic two brush that we already used earlier. I'm gonna just bring the brush size down all the way. Gonna have it somewhere here at 12 and also adjust the rest of our parameters. Lazy mouse should be all the way up here somewhere. And now I'll just add back here that generator because when we overwrite that black mask it will also get rid of our generators. So I'm just gonna add that dirt back on here and put it to multiply so that we only have it affecting here that scratch that we painted in there. Now one thing that I'm missing here is the height information and the reason for that is that our actual receiver folder, this one here, at the moment is on top of our scratches folder and since the height information is based on hierarchy we have to put that here above our receiver folder and now you can see that we get our height information back. So the only other thing that I still want to do here is add a filter to it, the sharpen filter to be exact, and I'm gonna lower the intensity down somewhere around 3.5. Let's zoom out a bit. And that definitely adds to it here. Maybe we could make it a bit more intense. So I'm gonna just duplicate that layer here. And that just makes it stand out a bit more here. We could do the same thing actually on the rear side as well. So I'm just gonna duplicate that layer here too. And if we toggle it, we can see how it just pops it out a bit more. And that's exactly what we want for these kind of details that matter. Now one of the last elements that we could still add here to our metal edgeware is this one and I'm just gonna add it here to our screws folder. Back here to the mesh selection and that just adds a bit more here of this chipping along these edges which makes it just look a bit more used than it was before. So as a next thing, first of all, I'm gonna make some space here so that we actually start seeing all our layers again. I'm gonna collapse the edgeware folder and I want to be working on the rear side again. I know that this is not really the most common color for the so-called rear side leaf, but I think that this orange just adds a nice touch of color in there. So what I want to do is make use of our color map that you can see here. We baked it out earlier and it is another way of selecting our geometry. And in that case, we can even select floater geometry. And if you remember these numbers here are floaters that we baked on top of our high poly element that we have here and that means that we can easily pick it. So I will go ahead here with the fill layer and I will add it to a folder which I call 
rear side text. And that folder, first of all, I'm gonna change the color on it already. Give it that orange. And now I'm gonna right click it and say add mask with color selection. So in here, we can then go to pick color. And as you can see, we have our floater geometry already laid out here. So all we have to do is pick it and it will appear just like that. And right now it actually looks more yellow than orange. So I'm just gonna slide that down here. And now it has this nice saturated orange. Another thing that we could also do in order to prevent this pixelated look on it is go back here to the color selection and increase our tolerance. And if you pay attention to these numbers, you will see how these pixels get filled basically with color. So somewhere around here would look better. However, we also have parts affected that we obviously don't want to have affected. And the reason for that is that this tolerance parameter here works almost like exposure in Photoshop that you would apply to a mask. So let's say this one particular color that we used here on these numbers is yellow and this one here next to it has a similar luminosity then it gets affected by it and basically just clamps into our mask here. And in order to prevent that, we will just add another black mask and select it here to our leaf. And now we're actually left with only the selection that we want to use it for. And now that I'm looking at it zoomed in here, I still feel like this could be tweaked a little bit more here. The Grunge doesn't look quite right on that. Gonna go back here into that rear side bits folder. Let's make sure we have the right one. And as for our metal edge wear, first of all, I'm gonna put that to two here, which makes it a little less chunky. But also I wanna lower the overall amount here, which is basically equal to opacity. And I really wanna minimize that. We're still going to add more wear and tear on everything in just a bit. And I think it will look better if that here doesn't have this metal edge wear really strong on it, on these small elements here. And speaking of more wear and tear, let's get right to it. I wanna be focusing here on the wood for the moment. And for that, I will copy our wood folder that we have here. And if you remember, if you look in the folder here, we already have some masks set up for it. And we can basically just hijack that, like make use of these folders that we already have here. However, I'm going to delete the content that's in it. So that we have empty folders with our masks on it. And now I'm gonna start here with a stock. I will create a fill layer. And I wanna disable the color on it as well as the metal. And I guess the AO we can also disable. So basically we're just working here with our height and the roughness on that now. And I'm gonna call it scratches. Gonna add a black mask to it. And onto the black mask, I'm going to add our mask builder generator. And I'll bring the level down to 0.2, as well as lowering our contrast. And thinking about it, it might be easier to see what we're actually doing if we bring back our color for the moment. So I'm just gonna check it back here so that we see how our generator actually affects that wood here. Back into the mask builder, we can now see that we have some actual wear here at the edges, mostly, following these curves. And that's the kind of look that we wanna have for it. So next, I wanna be going 
all the way down here to our scratches parameters and I'm gonna increase it to let's have it here somewhere at 1600 and in order to actually make them appear I'm gonna crank that up here as well as our scale here I'm gonna put it to 0.8 and now I'm going back here to our actual material. I'm going to disable the color on it. And in order to make these generator effects appear better, I'm going to adjust our actual material here. And I'm going to give the height a little bit of an adjustment here. And you can already see how these things pop out now. Also gonna do that for our roughness. I'm gonna bring it down a bit. So basically all the way down, you can see that we don't get any gloss on it anymore. But I actually wanna have that a little bit, just less than our actual base material here. So let's have that somewhere around here, looks fine. And back here to our stock mask, I also want to add another generator to it, which is the edge damages. It's that one here. And most importantly, I'm going to put it already to screen mode so that it blends with our mask builder. And let's have a look at it here. Gonna bring that down a bit, as well as our damage intensity. And now we already have this layer all set up here. Gonna go over here to our other elements that have wood on it. And I will just hit Ctrl D on that layer and drag it here into our other folders. Do the same thing again here and have it for the upper hand guard. And also I wanna call that here our main folder, wood, wear and tear. And since I quite like the look of this, I'm gonna just copy one of these folders here, doesn't matter which one, and I will drag it over our plastic glossy folder, which by the way we could rename into pistol stock. Gonna copy that here and call it pistol stock wear and tear. And I will overwrite that black mask here and assign it here to our actual stock. So now we have this effect also here on our plastic and we may still want to adjust it a little bit. Since we have that mirrored, I don't really quite like that butterfly effect that we're getting here. And in order to minimize this butterfly effect, what we can do is go into our generators and first of all, I'm gonna lower the intensity here. Level and intensity, both of them. And as for our mask builder, we have this unfortunate scratch here, which makes it really obvious. So what we can do is to hit that button here, the randomize button. And that will just put the whole grunge into different offset positions here in our UV map. So we can just keep pressing that until we are happier with it. And that here looks pretty all right to me. So you can see we now also have some of it here affecting our plastic on the, on the sides, which is the kind of effect that we want to have on it because it was just too pristine before. And also what we can do is that right now I feel like it's a little too strong here with the height. So I will go back here to the main material and I'm gonna bring the height information down a bit, almost back to zero. And I will instead make use here of our roughness slider and I'm gonna make it a little less glossy. So now we have it here, this chipping on the sides and that looks pretty all right for me. We're gonna still add more wear and tear in just a moment, but that will do here for our scratches. And back to our wear and tear. 
I actually forgot to add something to our wood. So I will go back here to our wear and tear folder for it. And back to the stock, I will create another fill layer. And I'm gonna make use here of the uniform black dirt material. So just clicking that will give us this in our fill layer. And in combination with the black mask and our dirt generator, which we find over here, I will then increase the contrast, bring it up to 0.8. And I also want to go back here into our actual material and enable the height channel on it. And the reason why I want to do that is that when I zoom in here, I don't want that dirt to be just flat. I actually want it to pop out a little bit. So what we can do is now just slide it over a bit. Let me just demonstrate what happens if I do that all the way. It's going to end up somewhere here. But we just want to have it on a very subtle amount so that it looks as if that dirt has actually been put there by having that AK here in use somewhere in the desert or wherever. And another thing that we can do is adjust our roughness on it. So I'm gonna match it a bit more here to the actual gloss of our stock. Have it somewhere here. And not to forget to also copy that, fo uh, that layer here, not folder. First of all, I'm going to call it dirt. And then I'm going to make a copy of it, Control D. Open up these folders here. I'm just going to drag it in there on top. So now we're also going to have this effect here on our hand guard. And the same thing here for the upper hand guard. I'm just gonna copy that here again and drag it in there. And I guess we could also do the same thing here again for our pistol stock. So another copy here and I'm gonna drag it over the scratch layer. And that might be a little bit too much here. Like that color is a bit strong What I'm going to do is lower the overall opacity here in the base color. Have it around 30 and that makes it look better. So next I'm going to collapse these folders here so that we see more what's actually happening. And I will create another folder on top of everything and call it Wear and Tear Global. In that folder, as usual, I'm going to drop a fill layer and I'm going to add a black mask to it. And onto that black mask, I'm going to make use here of our dirt generator once again. And before I tweak the actual material here, I'm just going to leave it white so that we see how our dirt is actually forming up. And I want to be lowering here the grunge amount, bring it down to 14, increase the actual level a slight amount and now I want to go into our actual material here and I want to disable the metalness on it. And you can see by switching that on and off how we get a little bit of a different look on it by having the metalness disabled. So in that case I just prefer it here without the metal channel. And I will go ahead and take the roughness all the way down here so that this looks just like a matte dirt base on top of everything. And for dirt to look like dirt, I'm gonna also have to adjust our base color here. Let's try to get some earth tone in there. Something like that looks all right. And now comes the important bit. On our generator here, I'm gonna lower the opacity 
by 50%. So I'm gonna leave it here. And now I will add another generator on top of that. And I'm going to make use of our metal edgeware. And now you can see that effect again here. Since we disabled our metalness channel, we have this really crazy look here on it, which obviously we don't wanna keep. However, if we lower that all the way down here to let's say 11, then we get a little bit of this extra contrast here on top of everything. And that's a nice look to have for it. So just by hitting this here on and off, you can see how it affects everything and just adds a little bit more of depth to our AK here. And speaking of depth, we may also wanna go back here to the material once more and slide that dirt that we just created a little bit here in that direction. However, I really wanna have it minimalistic so I'm going to give it an exact value here of 0 0.03 which may not even be visible here while we look at it in 2k but let's say we look at it in uh, our max resolution we will probably notice a little bit of an extra bump here very subtle and again that just adds a little bit more to our overall look of everything and one thing that I want to point out here for this specific folder that we have here is that it has quite the strong impact also on our roughness. If I browse over here to our roughness channel only, you can see how it actually affects it quite a bit. Gives it a different look here for our magazine and for various other things and just takes away a little bit from that monotonous gloss that we had on it before. So that helps it to make certain areas stand out a bit more and makes it for a very powerful layer that we have here. And since we want to pay attention to detail, when you have a look here at our floater elements that we baked onto our receiver, you can see that we have some edge wear here along the borders for everything that was just baked onto that element here. However, the actual geometry that we have here for these things and this and especially those guys here, we don't see any actual wear along these borders. However, the actual AK has exactly that. So in order to replicate that, we're just gonna duplicate that layer here and we will override our black mask. And I'm going to press Ctrl G to add another folder here where that layer then can be masked again. So I only want to affect certain parts here on the AK that actually have these kind of screws. So I'm going over here to the geometry decal and first of all I'm going to select the receiver here and I also want to affect other parts that have screws on it such as the trigger guard here as well as this element here and on that side we have this element and that should do Going back here into the brush mode and I'm gonna make use here of the artistic tool brush again. Bring it down to a reasonable size and adjust these parameters here. And most importantly I want to bring the jitter amounts, everything that says jitter, somewhere here around 3 or 4. And now back to our actual mask here we can start painting on our objects and they will only be affected on the mask regions and we don't run into any danger of affecting, for example, here the upper receiver where we actually don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna zoom in here and just start adding some 
grime wear and tear here to our objects. Maybe a little bit more here. And also this one here. And on the other side, same thing. I guess we could go crazy and also edit here because why not you will probably never see it would be a good answer to that but who cares right we know it's there and that's what matters forgot one over here Also forgot one over here. So now we have some nice grime here along our geometry. And I guess it wouldn't hurt if we just increase the size and add a subtle touch here in the back of that so that it looks like some oil came through there. Gonna undo that and try again. It was a bit too much. So over there it looks alright. And since that layer already functions as our oil behind the screws layer, I also want to be adding it to some parts that I haven't thought about before, such as our barrel element here. And specifically that one here I want to add it to. So we'll go back here to our mask, the one that masks the folder, and I'm going to add the barrel here to it. So mesh selection and selecting it and then back here to our paint mask and our brush. I will then just add a bit of a stain there. That was a bit too big. Still too big. Something decent like that looks good. And I may also want to add our rear side to that folder. And back to our brush. Let's see if I can add a bit of grime here in the back of it. Just some subtle amounts. And also here on that side, we have this screw. And it looks like we could also adjust our actual material a little bit. At the moment we have the roughness all the way down, so maybe we can just bring it back Let's have it here between 0.8 and 0.9 so that it's not 
completely opaque there. But other than that, I'm definitely liking what we have here so far. So the only thing that I still want to add some oil to is right here at the stock to that element here under that screw. And for that, I'm also going to add this element here again. And back to our paint mask and our brush. Just gonna add a little bit of this grime there. So as a next step here for our wear and tear, first of all, let me collapse these folders again, make a bit of space here. And I'm going to add another folder and I'm going to call it fingerprints. Going to drop a fill layer in there. Add a black mask as usual and make use here of our actual fingerprint brush that Substance Painter comes with. And also I want to adjust here our jitter amounts. So I'm gonna take it all the way down here, somewhere around here. And we may want to adjust our angle jitter. Like let's have it somewhere around 30. If you pay attention here to that little preview window, you will see that it basically just rotates it around and just gives the whole thing a bit more randomness when we start painting that thump on there. And then it's just a matter of actually applying them. So I'm gonna have some random prints here on our receiver bits. Let's try to add them where they actually would make some sense to have them. So maybe here and somewhere around here would probably also work. Magazine could also have some. And our hand guard. Gonna add a few more here in the front. And sometimes we have to be careful not to stretch our texture here. So make sure that you add it only here on a clear space and not on a curve. So that looks pretty all right here for that side. Let's have a look here at this one. And almost there. Gonna have another one here. Maybe second one. Now this one looks too perfect here. Gonna just undo it and click again so that our jitter amount actually puts it into a different position. And we could also add a few more here on the actual stock. It will only affect the side that we actually have on our original UV map. It's one thing to keep in mind if it doesn't work properly. gonna carefully place one here and that didn't look too well I'm gonna make it a little bigger and that looks all right there gonna have another one around there 
and also here on our actual pistol stock we can add some that would only make sense to have something there and now in order for that not to look like we just had to go to the police to give our fingerprints we're gonna add a generator here on our mask and the first one that I want to add is the grease generator. I'm gonna increase the level here to 0.8 and most importantly I'm gonna put it to multiply so that it only affects what we actually painted onto our mask here. It takes away from it and I'm gonna put it here to 0.8 between 0.8 and 0.9. Gonna increase our contrast here as well, 0.6. And now on top of that, I will add another generator, which is the dust generator. Also gonna put it to multiply. And I wanna put the level here up to 0.65, looks all right. And you can already see what these two generators are doing. It just puts a little bit of a randomness in there. And that's the kind of thing that we want to have here on it so that it doesn't look like perfectly stamped on. And since we don't want to leave it like that, we have to go back here into our material and we will disable the color on it. And optionally, I'm also going to disable the metalness, which makes it pretty much disappear entirely unless we adjust our height information here. So by cranking that up a bit, we will now see that our fingerprints appear here. And I'm also gonna put the roughness up, make it glossier, put it up to 0.2 here. And now we get this kind of subtle fingerprint effect that we want to have on it. Let's have a look at it here. Might be a little bit too strong with our height. So I'm going to put it to 0 0.02. And that still gives us enough information here for this kind of subtleness that we want to have on it. I'm gonna add another folder here and I'm gonna call it dust and into that folder as always gonna drop a fill layer and I want to change it to something something around here add a black mask as always and I'm going to add our dirt generator again. And on top of the dirt generator, I'm going to add our mask builder. And I will put the mask builder into multiply to take away from the dirt that we have underneath. And on top of this, I'm going to add our grease generator and I'm gonna put it into screen mode. So now we have some interesting blending going on here and I also want to add a sharpen filter. That was the wrong one. I'm gonna add the sharpen filter and I will lower the intensity to half and now what I'm gonna do with that is put the overall opacity here down to five. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing here for our height channel. Also gonna put it down to five. And back here to our base color, I will go into our material and I'm going to adjust the height information on it. So as you can see by cranking that up, we get some really subtle effects here. I'm gonna leave it around minus 0.2. And I also wanna have a look at it here from that side. 
if it's actually giving us the kind of effect that I want to achieve here. And as a matter of fact, what I want to do is put the roughness down here to 0.7, make it less glossy here on our metal. And speaking of metal, this is way too strong here. What I'm going to do is disable our metal totally on it. And in order to bring back here the looks of our dust on it, I'm going to increase our brightness here on it. Gonna have it almost all the way up here. And let me have another look around. I'm actually not liking this effect here too much, um, how that builds up. It looks a little washed out. So what I will try is just randomize our seat again. And that actually looks already much better. Like now this seems to fit better there. And let's have another look around here. I'm actually not too happy here with that noise that we have on our edgeware on the barrel. So I'm gonna go down here to that folder where we have it, the edgeware folder. And earlier we put the edgeware for this piece into the barrel elements folder. And our mask builder should be the one that's affecting that. What I want to do is go down here to our curvature parameters and I will bring it down to 8.6 so that we get less of that noise. And speaking of our edge wear, I just noticed that this thing here doesn't have any height whatsoever on it. And I'm pretty sure we actually have a default height applied to it. So that's again one of these cases where we have that folder here under our barrel elements folder and we just need to bring it back up on it. And that will give us some actual bump here that we can then also adjust a bit more. And I'm going to disable the fill here on it the first one so that we have a bit more of a pristine looking less bumpy noise here and now we have some better contrast here on that. Since we're already on that layer here I also want to bring down the base color on it a bit. I'm gonna have it here at 35 that makes it less intense and suits it better and another thing that I noticed is that that folder that we are currently in, which is supposed to affect this gas block here all the way, doesn't have any edgeware forming up here. And the only explanation for that is that earlier when we made that specific selection here, I must have forgotten to actually properly select it. So we'll go over here to our mask and with the not the mesh selection this time, but the polygon selection. I will just draw that selection over here. And now we see how we have this edgeware appearing where we also want it to be. Just gonna make sure I really selected everything. And I think we really have it for all the other elements on it, so we should be okay. I also want to go back here again to our dust and increase the opacity here for our color a little bit. Like 8 looks better, now we actually see a bit more of it again. Or maybe almost a bit too much, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna leave it at 6. And also right now it almost looks a bit too matte. Going to adjust the roughness a slight amount. 
see what happens if I drag it all the way up. Actually, it might be best to have it here somewhere between 0.5 and 0.6. Let's have a look. It also affects our, our wood. And speaking of our wood, I can't really exactly tell you why, but I'm not 100% liking it anymore at least here for our hand guard. So we'll go down here to the actual folder and instead of adjusting these parameters individually, I'm just gonna try our seed button here, the randomized one. And I'm actually quite liking that look over the one that we had before. It just gives the wood a bit more of a texture to it here, more of a structure, and that suits it better than what we had before. The only thing that I want to do is give the offset here a little bit of a vertical touch, just a slight amount. And as a last thing, I just want to zoom in here on our fingerprint once more. Maybe this one here is a bit more obvious. And I want to go back into it and I actually want to bring back our color. Earlier we disabled it. However, I was just thinking that we could make it look a bit like some more dust or some general dirt. So I'm gonna have it in some grayish tone here. somewhere around here and I will then just go over here to our base color opacity and bring it down to let's say 30 and also I want to adjust our height a bit on it again I actually think that it's still too strong on it so going into our height slider here enables us then to bring it down a bit more so I'm gonna leave it around 40 here and that still leaves us with enough information. We will see this fingerprint in Mamo set, but not as extreme. And speaking of Marmo set, that's the next thing that we're gonna do. The tutorial is basically completed here. Our modeling and our texturing is all done. And I really hope that you liked it, that you learned a few things and that you are also able to build your own assault rifle. You probably have enough of the AK now, but I think that the kind of things that we learned here through the couple of hours will enable you to also apply these techniques to any other gun that you want to be working on. And of course, I would be super happy to hear back from you guys how you liked it. Leave me feedback on my Facebook page or any other channel that you can find me in. And yeah, once again, thanks for following. And for the people that want to see the Mamo set part, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing next. We'll make some super nice renders and I will also show you how to give it a bit of a post-processing in Photoshop to add even more to it on top. And that will then hopefully make the portfolio shine. So the only thing that's left to do here really is to go over to our export texture dialog. And I just want to point it out here that under config, we could now export to any engine that Marmoset supports. And as you can see, those are basically all of them. We can also completely configure our very own export presets and that makes it absolutely flexible. There's nothing missing here. But for the kind of texture that we want to export over to Marmoset, we are good to go here with the default config 
And the only thing to really be aware of is that we want to export here in our final resolution, which is 4K. And also I like to export it as a Targa. And the other thing is I want to export it here into the Marmoset folder. Like before I had like the substance folder the whole time, but now I'm gonna just choose a new folder here, keep it clean and organized and hit that export button. And that will definitely take its time because it has to generate these 4K textures. So I'll see you as soon as this is done in the last element of our tutorial here. And we're gonna make some awesome renders. See you there guys.